so in this slide in this in this lesson we will talk about uh, the ancient engineering that was there in india okay and how we evolved the old investment casting process how it went to the west and at the end we will see how it has come back to india again as an industrial process this is a quotation from a great uh, sanskrit scholar who was a german called max muller i don't know how many have heard this name so he says that if you look at the all the whole world is india which is rich, most richly endowed in terms of not only natural resources but also human intelligence in fact they're looking at that india as solving world's problems and this was told 100 years back so if you look at uh, the history of india 1000 bc okay we had what is called as sthapatya ved which is part of derived from atharva ved which talks about construction engineering and some construction of all kinds of things not just building but also machines okay and later on 800 bc we had vaimanika shastra by sage bharadwaj who talks of all kinds of planes all kinds of instruments in the planes planes which can become smaller or bigger planes which can hear the conversation enemy planes different kinds of fuels detailed 18 chapters of different kinds of planes and pushpak vimana is just one of the 25 planes in a particular yug which is treta yug okay you should read that to believe that more recently 50 bc we had ras ratankar from nagarjuna who talk, talks about metallurgy of of metals of manufacturing and the delhi iron pillar is a good example of that the ancient metallurgical engineering which is 350 ad and later on 1000 ad we had which is 1000 years back we had vidri work and wood steel which was used to make damascus swords india ha had a large percentage of share of world trade okay this is our history here even if you go back even further than that the dancing girl which is 5000 years back right uh, the rig veda which is the oldest veda and no one has dated that is it 10000 years old 25000 years old people have all kinds of dating for that it mentions dhamatri and bastri and all that which are essential equipment for making castings okay and the madushita vidana which is the the bee wax or lost wax process that is mentioned also in some of these ancient texts and then panchadhatu and ashadhatu which are used for making idols in temples and other things and this is uh, these drawings are from saraswati mahal library in tanjore we have the preserved some of those ancient texts and drawings these are all dimension drawings found hundreds of years back okay and they talk about even a casting not only about quality but also quality of expression there okay proportions okay and then mudra stands and then your bhava or expression okay imagine applying that to industrial casting okay and then uh, you, you keep finding these ancient uh, sculptures all over the country as you go to remote this uh, this golden ganesha was in a remote village in in maharashtra you can't believe that suddenly go to village there is a golden ganesha there again found in a in a plowing field and you know, hundreds of years back now this ancient science is still preserved as you know in different pockets of the country where they still make those castings by lost wax presses exactly the same way as it was done 5000 years back the only change they say in many places in some lanterns they are using electric bulbs to light the place otherwise process is exactly same materials equipment process is exactly same okay and here is an example of how it is done in near tanjur a place called sami malai near tanjur they make this uh, castings using kaveri clay from kaveri river they make those wax uh, statues from the bee wax and then carve it out then uh, put the clay around that then dry it and then finally pour metal and then again carving of the of the thing with um, with nails iron nails the whole process takes 3 4 months now i know why these statues cost so much because it just takes so much of effort and time and these castings have been there for quite ages so these are all examples of castings ancient uh, castings from all over the country preserved in different museums so you have this 4th century bodhi stupa to 9th century you know krishna in chola period later on 11th century and 12th century 18th century different gods and goddesses and you can see examples of that and from india it went to middle east and that uh, the frog the cast bronze frog found in mesopotamia iran iraq area is the oldest second oldest casting found in the world and then we have uh, buddhas from china and uh, thailand and then it went to europe through the middle east route and the head of papal foundry who is supposed to be the father of modern foundry industry look at what he says 
He says it is highly esteemed, highly skillful and profitable art, okay, and also delightful. In fact, there is a saying that once a foundryman, always a foundryman. Foundrymen cannot seem to change, be able to change their jobs because they love it so much, okay. And that's really true. Once you do you know the foundry, you know why people love it so much, okay. And this art became a beautiful uh, uh, sculpture in by first one by this Bardi's art and this Perseus with uh, Medusa is one of the most famous art pieces by Cellini, the famous sculptor and, and painter also. Then you had this thinker which is by Rodin is again a great painter and uh, sculptor. You find replicas of this thinker all over the Europe, okay. And followed by the Indo first mass production castings came in UK. The Whitechapel Bell Foundry is the one which exported the bell to USA which became the Liberty Bell but that cracked finally which is in Philadelphia today, okay. So imagine USA had to import castings from UK at one point of time, okay. And later on the British, Britishers when they expanded the, in, the, in India and tried to put railways all over the place, they needed castings for those railways. And the first foundry in India, steel foundry, iron foundry was in Jamalpur in West Bengal and the first steel foundry also is in the railways workshop in Jamalpur. These are the first oldest foundries in, in India. So in a sense India invented metal casting, it went to Europe and then came back in a sense with industrialization back to India, okay. So what I just taught, told you was that how it is one of the oldest manufacturing processes and how it spread to the country and the industrial, industrialization of metal casting is what made it possible to make it economical for a large number of people and for industries to grow.